Hey everyone, this is Kelly Calabrese here with your Intentionally Fabulous tip of the day. Today we are talking about perfectionism. Can you guess why? <laughs> because I am a recovering, recovered perfectionist. So perfectionism, what, what even is it? If you are not one, you might not get this. And if you are one, you will probably really relate. Perfectionists actually believe that perfection is possible and they refuse to accept anything less and they spend their entire lives striving for perfection. So perfection is not attainable. I will just say that right now, not on this side of heaven, it is not. In heaven it is, here, no, not so much. Um, it may or may not be OCD. So OCD may be a perfectionist, but perfectionists don't necessarily have OCD, they're different. It's not even necessarily a high achiever. In fact, um, perfectionism will keep you from high achieving because you're so focused on things being perfect that you don't even get as much done because it's paralyzing. Perfectionism is based in fear. It is based in insecurity and perfectionists are no fun to live with. I will tell you that. Um, I will just remember times that my ex-husband would walk in and say, um, you didn't notice all the good things, but you noticed the one dish in the sink. Like you didn't recognize and acknowledge and praise that the rest of the house was clean. You noticed the one dish in the sink. So we are no fun to live with, I will tell you that. So what are some of the problems of being a perfectionist, as you can imagine? Um, they're stressed all the time, just chronically, chronically stressed. Everything is either all or nothing. So it's very black and white for perfectionists. It's, it's not even realistic to live this way. You could imagine the anxiety that's chronically building up in you if you're looking for things to be perfect, especially if you have children. I mean, if you want to live alone with no pets and no kids and no relationships, you might do okay. But that's not why we're here on earth. We're here to connect and have relationships. So um, perfectionists are highly critical of others but where that comes first, what that roots in, is we are highly critical of ourselves. That's why we're so quick to criticize others. Um, this fear just drives us. Our standards are so unreasonably high. Um, we're focused on just the result. We don't care how you get there, just get it done. Where a high achiever is actually enjoying the process and learning along the way and adjusting, the, the perfectionist is just looking at the finish line. And even when they, they finish something and accomplish something, it's not like, oh, hey, let's celebrate. They're on to the next thing. And they probably weren't thrilled with how things went because they could have went better. Can you see how this is not a healthy way to live? Perfectionists tend to be more depressed. Um, they're actually procrastinators because they're so focused in on things being perfect that they don't start something because they're toiling in how do I do it the best way and, and imagine buying something like a car you know a large um, purchase how they could just spend so many hours researching and trying to get the best deal and comparing and that they don't actually wind up getting as much done at all um, they're super defensive so someone who's a super achiever they want feedback they welcome feedback but a perfectionist they get very defensive because they think their way is the only way and the best way. Um, and I know I said I was a perfectionist and I had some, but not all of these. I, I actually tend more towards the super achiever side, but perfectionism absolutely was an issue for me. Perfectionists have low self-esteem because they always want to be better. They want their skin to be better, their bodies to be better, their relationships to be better, their kids to be better. So their self-esteem is always going to be low because there's always going to be something in comparison that's better than what you have. So how do we stop it? <laughs> Number one, I mean, it's just like any other addiction, disease, you need to acknowledge it. You need to say, I have a problem. That's like step one of this, the 12 step process of anything, right? So you need to recognize, yes, I do this and I don't want to do it anymore. You need to recognize that there is some strength in perfectionism because we can be 
high achiever. So that discipline is actually a good thing. So how do we take the good side of perfectionism and use that for our strength? Another thing to do is just always be checking in and just saying, okay, is this good enough? For example, if you're a writer and you're writing a book, at some point you have to check in and stop and say, it's good enough. Could it be better? It could always be better, but every author has to get to a point where they check in and say, it's good enough. Because at some point, there's diminishing returns. So checking in and looking at, okay, I could spend another three hours, you know, perfecting this PowerPoint, but really, is it good enough? Can I make an impact? Can I get my point across where it is now and use those three hours to do something else, something joyful, something celebratory, um, you know, maybe on to a different task, spend time with your kids, something else. Another thing perfectionists can do is really adjust their standards. So looking at it and saying, okay, does it have to be here? Do we have to be at the highest possible, most excellent level? Or is it okay if we're here and there's some peace and joy and celebration that can surround it? Um, problem solve and then move on. So as a perfectionist, can you look at it and say, okay, what is the outcome we'd like to see happen? Can we make that happen and just move on from that and not just keep toiling about it? Um, notice the patterns that get you into this perfectionism and stop them. You know, when you find yourself getting into just overthinking, getting paralyzed, procrastinating, what gets you there and then just change it up, break the cycle of perfectionism. Um, something you can do is have an accountability partner in this. So for example, I have an accountability partner that we literally check in every single day. We are committed to doing this and it keeps us on track. But if I'm a perfectionist, I might not be getting things done because I'm too worried about it being perfect. So if I check in with my accountability partner, he's going to say, you know, did you do this? So that will absolutely help you to break the cycle. Another is just to redirect. When you get to a point where you're like, okay, this is good enough, let me change directions and do something else. Or if you find yourself getting stuck in perfectionism, move on to another task. Um, celebrate successes, that's always important. I actually did a Facebook Live tip yesterday on celebrating successes, so if you didn't catch that, go back and, and watch that. And so I hope these tips were helpful. I know we're doing these short videos and of course we can always do a deeper dive on any of these topics. And here's some great news. I actually am doing a one hour webinar that's coming up. It is free. Um, there's three dates starting on September 30th and October 1st, October 4th. I would love if you came. I have two amazing bonuses just for signing up for the free webinar and staying until the end that will totally bless you. Um, and I'll be covering the eight things that I used after I went through my healing from separation and divorce to get to a place of intentionally fabulous. So I want to share that with you. Um, so please do click on the link below and sign up for that. It's at intentionallyfabulous.com. And I will say one final word about perfectionism. Give it up to God, honestly. Just surrender it and watch what he will do with it. Yes, we have a part to do. But um, God doesn't love perfectionism. It doesn't exist here. He knows it's messy. He knows that there's, we're, you know, hurting people that have gone through some suffering and we're doing the best that we can. So surrender your perfectionism and watch what will happen in your life. It will be incredible beyond what you can ask, think, or imagine today. So I hope you enjoyed today's tip. I hope you sign up for the free webinar and I will see you back here tomorrow with another intentionally fabulous tip. Have an awesome day.